Did you ever want to whip buildings and bend over to get rammed by a fucking war tower? Well, Master of the Desert Nomads got you covered. It's got green sand for some reason, and dope-ass physics where smooth wheels can climb up near vertical sand surfaces without a problem. And look, a boom. Boom. So the module begins with desert raiders striking border villages across the Republic. And the lords of the land, wanting to stop this, puts out a summons for the best in the realm. But instead of greatness, they get you. Your D&D group. You know, these fucking dudes who do this shit all the time. So you volunteer, but you're late. Because fuck you, the module said so. And then as punishment for being late, it sends you off to war with the unusables. Like, holy shit, I didn't make the choice to be late. The module's just being a bitch. And then says I'm unusable? What an insult. I mean, my god, it's the best I've ever heard. Imagine using that in your next argument. Like, hey dick muncher, you're unusable. Wham! If people don't die like you just struck them with a verbal finger of death, then they are goddamn immortal. But what's it like with the unusables? Maybe it's harsher than it seems. Well, you fight over dead men's boots, knife people in blood feuds, and burn down villages. And find out you're the bad guys. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to sympathize with the raiders at this point, but if these are the locals, maybe I'll take my chances with the villains of this story. So now at this point, the module recommends the DM read the adventure before running. And I'd have to agree. Unless you're about to telepathy that shit off the page, reading is the best way to get information, and currently the best way to understand words. So I'm a big fan of this advice. Five gold middle fingers from me. So now the adventure begins, and for a few days you fight rat dogs, and watch these two fighters tag team one dog while the wizard is left alone to fight the rest. I mean, look at him. He's pissed. He's like, I got three hit points, motherfucker, help me. And the fighter is like, yeah, one hit point for each creature, you stupid idiot. So you make it to Pramayama, or something like that, and spend your days gossiping with the locals. You can learn how the desert raiders killed someone's brother, but also how they were a strong worker. And I'm like, wow, that's an odd thing to say about the dead. Like, would we do that in real life? Hey, dad died. But don't cry, he was a strong worker. Oh shit, that's dope as fuck, dude. Peace, dad. Work that 9 to 5 in heaven. Yeah, gossip sucks in D&D. You can also encounter a guy who used to be an adventurer who knows the raiders are orcs since he ran into them, but instead of dealing with them himself, he just ran away. And I'm like, why? I know you're old, but character levels don't go away once you retire. So what happened? Whatever. But I'm sure the guy who lost his brother is like, thanks for telling us they're orcs, asshole. So at the town, the first NPC you meet is Saris. He's the commander of the army and rude as fuck. He ignores the players, and if the players continue to talk to him, he confines them in jail. He's like, fuck that role-playing shit. Do the adventures, you pricks, and leave me out of the module. You can find a house with a mad hermit who thinks he speaks for God. He whips out a dirty dagger from his butt sheaf for no reason and leaps on the nearest player. Now, no one cares if you kill him, since all he does is scream at all hours of the day. And holy shit, that is annoying. So yeah, I agree. Murder his ass. But leave the dagger behind. Trust me, you're better off. So once the first night hits, leadership decides you're on guard duty. And that's who I want watching my back. The group who rolled in with the unusables, raided half the villages here, and just murdered a man in cold blood. Sleep tight. But here you are on guard duty, and you hear hissing in the desert. I wish it was pissing. But it's a soul eater. Basically that dirty kid from the comic Peanuts. And he's trying to kill some dude who came out of the desert. Who also looks like that dirty kid from Peanuts. If you win, the desert dude named Gilliming or something will be like, you want to do a mission? Because after saving someone's life, it's just common courtesy to offer them a quest. I mean, you don't want to be rude. 
So you get a map to the Temple of Death with no details, making it worthless. And Saris is like, go there and get the fuck out of here. He gives you nothing to help, refuses to talk, and I have to wonder at this point if he even wants to be in the module, because he's fucking useless. So then the module decides it doesn't want to be a desert adventure anymore, and for no reason fucking swamps exist in the arid wasteland, out of nowhere. You know, a place known for the lack of rain. So you take a raft down the only river through the dense desert marshland. The desert marshland, the one in the middle of the fucking map, is where you get your standard random encounters. Like swamp termites, dragons, and leeches that blood suck. You know the term blood suck, right? Like what a vampire does? Blood suck. From there you encounter Malakaz, a force of evil that lives as a ooze under a random hut. It can drain mines, trap PCs in the hut indefinitely, is immune to magic and any damage it heals. You can't kill it, has no background information, and has no bearing on the adventure. Honestly, it feels like an encounter from another module that got put in by mistake. What's the point? It's so out of place. It's like when you accidentally put your family pics in your porn folder, and all of a sudden you're whacking off to grandma. You still enjoy it, but it's just weird. So after that, you encounter a dust storm. No, just kidding. It's a hundred bandits. A hundred bandits. What the fuck are they thinking? You know how long that combat encounter is going to last? It's like five sessions, with four of them being my players bitching about how long the fight's going to take. So the bandits are attacking a caravan, and you get two options. Option A is warn the caravan, and get 50 allied NPCs on top of the 100 bandits to watch the DM roll out. Or B, let them die. Let them die. There isn't enough dice in the world to do out this encounter. But if you do, you get 200 gold for winning. Oh joy! From there, you can get to an oasis with a buried temple. And there's this tabby. This thing. And he steals your map running into the temple. And now you get to go get that little shit. Or how else are you going to go into the temple of evil? So you're going inside. Once inside, there's some skeletons nailed to the wall. An outdoor altar with some writing on it. And a storeroom with some scrolls. I talk about a scorping man who used to live at the temple. Deeper within the temple was a burial chamber. There's a sarcophagus and a warning to not disturb it. So naturally you're going to disturb it, as that's like the law. And what happens when you do? The module says shitstorms. Wild, uncontrolled shitstorms. But it's more like constipation storms because nothing ever comes of it. But you do find a shaft that opens into the bowels of the earth. And if you go inside, you die, because it stinks, and there's a fucking inferno. But the tabby jumps in with the map, you know, the paper map, and the tabby, the thing covered in hair, the two most flammable looking things in the module, but they're just fine. That's some bullshit. Because why does he live and I don't? Are you trying to rupture my butt ring with the long dildo of fuckery? So whatever. You continue through the desert, and there's some dude, Taliel. He talks about true faith, and don't kill him, because you have to fight a hundred of his people if you do. So just follow him to his camp. Trust me, it's easier. He tells you all the NPCs at the start of the adventure are dead, and good thing they had no personality or you might care. He doesn't know anything about Master of the Army, and starts talking in riddles. Four dudes who can't move and a man who isn't a man, and points off into the desert saying the temple's that way. Get the fuck out and go. Now, this is where you get into the second encounter chart. It's fine. You accidentally walk onto the set of the movie's Tremors for a bit, then find a cave. And what's in it? Nothing. The module just uses it as a moment to dick flex the size of Master's army, and lets you hide while they pass. It's like a million guys, so just ignore them. But this is where you get to see that cool juggernaut in the cover art. The module notes how there can be many possibilities of adventure, and proceeds to explain how everything you do invokes the wrath of like a billion guys. So it's just a cock tease of an adventure. So just leave the cave, and travel more to get to this picture. The Guardians of the Pass. Sounds cool, 
but it's just a madman pretending to be three statues. Just ignore it. You need a wish to fix him. And then he's like, I don't know shit. Thanks for the ninth level spell. And then the module says the DM should not give the players free help. So fuck them. Damn. That gives me the butt rumbles. So then comes the evil abbey, which is on the Black Mountains, built of red stone. And is that evil enough? I don't think so. Where's the dragons? The lightning storms? The pit of demons? The endless volcanoes? Why go half erect and not full on bone or evil? Inside are these evil monks. They call themselves Boots? Boots? Butts. Yeah, butts. Don't correct me. It's butt monks. So if you climb the 999 steps to the top, the butt monks will be like, Hey, you want to stay the night? And you're like, sure. This seems legit. And then they try to kill you. In the night. And you're like, no. But you're not so much mad that they tried to kill you. As much as you now have to explore this shithole. The first thing you notice is the monks celebrate Festivus. They have one stone rod in a courtyard that represents their god. And who is that god? No explanation. There's a kitchen where you can make meals. And a dirty ass bathhouse covered in algae. There's also like 60 more rooms where it says nothing can be found here. So you know, filler. There's another room with some paintings. And if you ask about the paintings, they're like, yo, butt face, meditate that answer, dude. We don't fucking know, so why should you? Then they fight you for asking. Beyond that is a temple with poop-covered paintings, making me believe the writers hate art. But if it's modern art, then I have to agree. There's the main temple, where there's even more paintings, of all various deities, which the module does not describe. So let's come up with some. But I feel like we need modern gods. I mean, when was the last god created? 2,000 years ago? Man, we got some modern problems now. So we need modern deities. So let's begin. Okay, first, there's Jim. He's just some dude. He carries a time clock and makes sure the fucking late co-worker Beth shows up on time for once. So you can clock out at the end of your shift instead of staying those 10 extra minutes. Fucking Beth. There's Tower. He's just a cell phone tower. His church is just a cell phone tower. His symbol's Wi-Fi bars, and you pray to him when the internet isn't acting right. All his priests get endless uninterrupted sendings for just $9.99 a month with a free iPhone holy symbol with every conversion. Then there's the God of Oil. He's just the Monopoly man ejaculating gasoline straight into fuel pumps keeping the prices down. All his priests get turned environmentalists at will, and they don't give a shit about anything but going fast. And finally, Hollywood. Movie tickets spit out of his nipples. His priests are bards, and anyone caught making remakes of timeless classics are killed in a pile of burning film. There's also a subcult that punches modern artists in the dick. That shit's heretical. So after that, there's a library that wastes your time with rituals it doesn't describe a timeline of the abbey that is 99.5% incomplete a map of the past that you can already see with your own damn eyes opinions of a religion that will not be useful to the players and a cursed scroll that fucks you over but don't forget to read all 5,000 of them in case you miss something wood assitude the writer should be whipped finally you get to the crypts. It's bad. But here, we'll get some pre-rolled characters. A Charisma 7 Cleric? Wow, what an asshole. Fucking punches you right in the face to heal. There's a stupid dwarf. Naturally. One in every party. A clumsy elf. And what's the point? Who wants to play that? And then there's a halfling who uses an elven cloak and boots. Why? Why not the elf? Well, I guess she's busy using Detect Gems. But why does the dwarf not have that? Because he's stupid. Oh, and he's also too busy being scared of werewolves. Fuck you. 